Hello and welcome to the YouTube channel. Today I'm going to talk about something that is not my typical shtick. I'm not going to be talking about physical media. I'm going to be talking about laws that have recently passed in Australia. In particular, I'm going to be talking about the social media ban for youth of Australia. Now, before I get started, I have to say up front, these views are opinion. They are my own and they do not represent anyone else I work with or anyone else who I'm friends with or anything. They are my own views and this is how I feel about the legislation that's just passed. So I can't comment on youth of Australia at the moment. I, I'm very far removed from that age. I was a youth a very long time ago. So I can't talk about how youth engage on social media. I, I don't know. I'm simply out of that generation. <laughs> but what I can talk about is when I was a youth, I turned to social media, I turned to the internet for that outlet, and I turned to things like trolling. Obviously, that was a bad part of my past, but I did turn to stuff like that. I did turn to the internet for an outlet. When you're not reflected in the mainstream media, you start to see trends of children and young people going to online, and you see people, you see them idolize people like rappers. You see them idolize people like actors. And some are good, some are bad. Like I say to people that I like someone's work like Barker at the moment. She's doing amazing work in indigenous communities. Nookie as well. Amazing rappers. They are doing really well to engage youth of Australia and make them know like, hey, we see you young brothers and sisters. We see you. And then it's not only black Australia as well. It's also white Australia. There's a lot of young people who will be impacted by this ban who are like, but how do I engage with my friends overseas? Like, how do I, how do I connect to a community when the government are telling me I need to not engage with that community? I think this is something that has been rushed. I think this is going to be a big problem for the youth of Australia. And I think you're going to see certain statistics go up. And it's hard to say that word statistics because these are kids and people who will obviously see no other way out. And I think Prime Minister Albanese and his government have made a big mistake. Without looking at the mental health aspects of what a ban would do to youth. And you, I know they see it as like the mental health aspects of Facebook and social media and Instagram and TikTok and whatever. I know the way offs are pretty big. I know. You, I know the whole kids should be kids, but kids are not the same as when Albanese was growing up. Kids are kids don't do the same stuff. Kids learn about stuff at a much younger rate than I ever did, than he ever did, than anyone of previous generations ever did. And while I am not a youth, as I said, I can't talk about how youth engage on social media and contact each other on social media. I don't know any of that. I am too old for that. I am an old geezer compared to that. But... I think this is going to be a massive nightmare for a lot of people. And I think, look, there's no way to police it. And I know they're going to say they're going to find social medias and so on. I get that. But this is a poorly thought out process. It was rushed through Parliament. And I believe you're not, yeah, they might ban children from social media. It may come into effect. It may keep a lot of kids off social media. But I think this is going to be even more damaging when you start looking at the youth. Um, I don't know if I can use the word, but the youth. Um, um, what's the word for it? I need to use a word that's safe on here. The youth rate of looking for a way out. I think you're going to see that as something that rises as a result of what's happened in Australian Parliament today. And I think it's been poorly thought out. I think this is something that is very damaging to democracy and very damaging to Australia and very damaging to the next generation of youth. As I said, some of the decisions you make towards your career later in the next stage of your life when you become a, when you're in your 20s, 30s and so on, you start making those decisions when you're a teenager. You start saying like, okay, I need to be on Facebook. Uh, if you're becoming a journalist or something, you'd be on Facebook researching and looking into backstories and so on. And the fast pace of the internet now is that 
a lot of people do have the option to lock their profiles. A lot of people do have the option to use a safe mode of like YouTube. A lot of kids do have that option to the, available to them. But it's almost like it's stopping progress. But here's the great thing about democracy. And I believe this is a beautiful thing about democracy. These kids will reach voting age at one day. And they can vote against what Prime Minister Albanese and his government did. It's the same way like the last generation did with Morrison and the Liberal governments. How a lot of people didn't like how he handled the 2020 era and even the bushfires era. So a lot of youngsters who were coming up voted independent or voted green or voted other parties. And you saw what was called the teal independence get a lot of pretty big seats in the parliament. You saw the heir apparent for the Liberal Party, the next leader who was always lined up to be the next leader after Scott Morrison in Josh Frydenberg, also lose his seat. And that's how you've ended up with, that's how we've ended up with Peter Dutton in that chair, because there was no one to oppose Dutton's choice in the running, you know, there was no one there to really have the same amount of power as Dutton had. So you have to look at this as what has Australia just done? I look, as I said, I can't comment for how children use the internet. I don't know enough about it. But what I can say is that I feel like this is going to be very damaging. It's going to be very terrible for some children who may already be at their lines, the end of their line, already isolated in a schoolyard, already isolated from everyone else. And now they're looking at this as like, oh, now they want to take my one connection to the outside world away. I know if that had happened when I was a youth, when I was going through the same things, when I was going through my error in like 2008 and 2009, we have a lot of issues where I, where it was very hard to pull through some of that. I know if I didn't have social media, I may not have even make, made it. I may not have been in front of a camera talking to you beautiful people. <laughs> but do you know what I'm saying? Like, I feel like this is terrible for Australia. I feel like this is terrible for the youth of Australia. And while I don't know enough about how they, the youth of Australia use that, I'm not that age. I feel like it's, ter it's a terrible thing to suppress progress. And while I believe there needs to be options and safeguards in place to protect children online, I believe part of the legislation is that I believe that is a good part of it, of like, okay, options, lock down profiles, or, you know, make sure that every available avenue has been met to stop bullying on there. I understand that. Make sure that if videos are posted, they're instantly flagged with New South Wales police or Queensland police or whatever. If it's against certain wills or, you know, and I believe all that stuff. I believe in protecting youth in that stance, but not at the rate of progression of like having an outlet for the children to reach out on social medias and to essentially have an outlet to the world. I don't know the right answer, guys. I'm not a politician. And these are only opinion, as I mentioned, as a car goes right past my window revving. <laughs> so yeah, I don't have all the answers. I don't know what Prime Minister Albanese and his government were thinking, but that's the beautiful, beautiful thing about democracy. I believe democracy will come around. These children who its impacts will turn to voting age at one point in the coming years. And then you're going to start seeing that in statistics. When you see shifting demographics, you're going to start seeing a lot of these youth get the voting age and you're going to see trends against maybe labor. And you saw it definitely with liberal in the past because there are two major parties in Australia, labor and liberal. Um, you're going to start seeing trends. Maybe the greens get a few more seats, maybe independence. I think a lot of, I think a lot of good come from independence being in parliament. You see independent voices in parliament, like, whether you love them or hate them, having a mixture of different voices that aren't the two major parties help to check power in a way. But yeah, I just had to make a video because I've been like thinking about it all day and I'm just like, it brought me back. It was kind of triggering, even though I'm older and I'm definitely like a lot removed from that era of my life. I had to think about like, what would I have done if I had lost that outlet? My one outlet to the world when I was going through stuff, I don't know if I would have made it. I don't know if I would have 
I mean, yeah, it wasn't the most healthy outlet. As I said, I became a troll at one point and I didn't, it wasn't the best for me. I knew I had to get away from it, but also without it, I don't think I would have survived, you know? But yeah, it's a tough one and I don't know the answer, guys. But if anyone was wondering my thoughts on that, that's my thoughts. I think this is something that was rushed through Parliament by the Albanese government and this is fully my opinion on this. This is only my opinion. It doesn't represent anyone else except myself. And yeah, I think democracy is beautiful. The bill will be answered at one point. I'm sure there will be... The receipt will be paid. I'm sure some kids will be like, you know what, when I become voting age, I'm going to vote and I'm going to vote against that party. As they did with Liberal, as I said, with the way Liberals handled the bushfires and Prime Minister Morrison handled the bushfires and, you know, 2020 era, 2020 era, a lot of people weren't comfortable and they got to voting age during that era. And then you watched democracy take its full course. I don't know if that's going to happen, but I'm very cautious that there are people who are going to see no other way out. And that's a terrible thing to think about.